In this video, I will show you how to conduct a chi-square test in SPSS. This data file includes three variables. The first one, called ID, is just a numerical identifier for all the individuals in the data set. The other two variables are categorical variables. The first one is called educational level, and the other one is called course preference. The educational level variable has two categories, and if we go to the variable view tab, we can see that the educational level variable has the value 1 for undergraduate students and the value 2 for graduate students. The course preference categorical variable also has two categories and we use the value 1 to indicate that students prefer online instruction and the value 2 to indicate that students prefer face-to-face -face instruction. What we're interested in doing here is to determine whether there is an association between these two categorical variables, whether there is a statistically significant relationship between them. But because they are qualitative variables, we cannot compute any correlation coefficient. So what we can do is to conduct a chi-square test. To do that, we have to go to the Analyze menu, click on Descriptive Statistics, and then choose Cross Tabs. On the left side, we have a list of all the variables in our data file. We have to choose the variable that will be displayed in rows in our cross tab. So let's just choose course preference for the rows and students' educational level for the columns. It doesn't really matter what choice you make here, the results will be the same. We can construct cross tabs without actually conducting a test of significance. But if we do want to conduct a test of significance, we have to tell SPSS to compute the chi-square test statistic. And to do that, we have to go to the Statistics button and then check the box that is next to the chi-square and then continue. If we want to get not only the observed count or frequencies in each cell of the table, but also the expected count, we have to go to the Cells button and check the box next to the word Expected. We also have the option of requesting percentages, not only counts, but let's just work with the counts for now. So click Continue and then OK. In the output window we have three tables. The first one is just a summary table. The second table is our cross tab or the contingency table. We can see that the course preference variable is displayed in rows. The first row is for online preference and the second row is for the face-to-face -face preference. The other qualitative variable, student educational level, is represented in columns. So we have a column for undergraduate students and another column for graduate students. In each cell we have first the observed count and then the expected count. So we can see for instance that it was expected to see approximately 33 undergraduate students who prefer online education. But in this sample, only 20 undergraduate students actually preferred online education. Similarly, it was expected to see about 22 graduate students who prefer online instruction, but 35 of them preferred online instruction. And if we look in all of these cells, we can see that there are discrepancies between the observed values and the expected values. The question is, are these discrepancies large enough to reject our null hypothesis? To respond to this question, we have to look at the chi-square test statistic and its p-value. 
The Pearson chi-square statistic is provided in the first row of the third table. In our case, this value was 28.451. We have one degree of freedom, and the p-value for this statistic was very close to zero, so we can reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we could say that graduate students prefer online education, whereas undergraduate students prefer face-to-face -face education. There is another way to run the chi-square test and obtain the exact same results, but having the data set up in a different way. In this data file, for instance, we have three variables, educational level, instructional preference, and frequencies, but instead of having 100 observations, we only have four observations. Actually, these are the four subgroups in our table. We have the group of undergraduate students who prefer online education, and there are 20 students in this group. We have the group of students who are undergraduate but prefer face-to-face -face education, and there are 40 students in this group. We have graduate students who prefer online education. There are 35 students in this group. And graduate students who prefer face-to-face -face education, and only five students are in this group. Before we run the chi-square test, we have to tell SPSS that each one of these rows receives a different weight based on the number of individuals who are in these groups. So to do that, we have to go to the data menu and then choose the option weight cases. And from all the variables that we have in this data file, we have to choose frequency weight cases by and then move the frequency variable in this area and then OK. In our output window we can see that this command was executed. We don't have any other output but we see that from now on for further analysis SPSS is weighting cases by the variable frequency. So now we can go back and run our chi-square test. And we do it the same way as we have done it before. So go to the Analyze menu, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs. Again, we have Instructional Preference in the rows, Educational Level in Columns. We have the chi-square test statistic. We are requesting both observed and expected values. And then click OK. We can see in our output window that we obtain exactly the same results as we did before. We have the same contingency table as we had here, the same chi-square value and the same p-value.